What's up? This is Casey from Casey's Customs. In this series, I am building a hot rod for under $3,500. We're channeling it, we're chopping it, we did airbags, and in this video, I finish up all the piping for the turbocharger. Let's get going. What's up? We are back on the 1951 Chevy. I know I say that in almost every single one of my videos, but guess what? We are back on it. I be repeating myself and shit. Anyways, cool thing happened. Uh, my mic was broke on this camera and I, half of the footage where I was talking, it just did not work at all. The other half I should be able to use, but let me go ahead and update you because there's a good chance none of it's usable. What we did to start yesterday, I took the front clip off, took the hood off, uh, there it is over there. Took the hood off, took the front clip off so that I could start on my turbo. I got a lot of the piping in, not all of it, but I got a lot of it in so we can start figuring stuff out. Um, I posted the video yesterday, part 11, I believe it was, and I started on the turbo. Had a bunch of people helping, telling me ways to tweak stuff and told me to clock the turbo. Um, in the last video, I looked at it it was the other way around, but I looked at it to clock it and I was like, well, that's not gonna help me much, but I didn't even check on this side. This way it actually helps a lot. I should still have the video of this, but we did clock it and got it turned down. Stop being a bitch. So I still have kind of a funky bend, but it's not nearly as funky as it was. So I probably had at least 30 people telling me to clock the turbo. And then I had a bunch of other people saying, hey, dummy, you need to run the driver's side manifold because then that connects to your passenger and then you get all of the exhaust going through the turbo. Maybe I didn't uh, word it right. I completely understood that. I know that both exhausts have to go to the turbo. The problem is this kit, and I found this out since I posted the last video, this kit was actually for a two wheel drive, like a cyclone truck setup. Those were all two wheel drive. So all this stuff in the front, I just don't have room for because it's four wheel drive. I, there's no way there's axles and all kinds of shit under there. So I can't run it that way. So what I said in the video was I said, my exhaust will just go back out there the way it's supposed to. And I think people thought I meant just only run it off the one side. No, no, I just mean I can go out the back because they, I think originally came into one and then went out. What they'll do now is I'll be able to just go up and then connect that to the other side of this pipe because this actually does have some room to kick down. It can't go across though like the kit wants it to, but it can go down that way, I think. So my plan is to still have all that connected. It's just gonna go around the back because four wheel drive, I just, I don't have the room up there. I'm gonna go ahead and jack it up just in case I do, but it really didn't look like it was even gonna be possible. Um, half of my problems with this kit was no instructions, no nothing. The company just kind of like figured it out and everything I've read, everything I've looked up, this was definitely meant for a two wheel drive. And actually, a two-wheel drive, they, they go even better in two-wheel drive full-size trucks, like a, whatever, 2005, 1500, where your frame rail would be another foot out on each side. Uh, this is a blazer, so everything is really tight. Being a four-wheel drive blazer, it's even tighter. But we should still be able to make it all work. We're just going to have to do some funky bends. What was another thing people said? Oh, another thing people said was my... Um, Mass airflow sensor needs to go on the front of the turbo. I had thought you could still run it back there, so that was help. I am gonna go ahead and uh, figure out how to get a 90 in there and then have it right before the filter. So it'll go filter, mass airflow sensor into the turbo. That should help there. Uh, I'm sure we're still gonna have a bunch of stuff that needs tweaked and tuned, but uh, that's just what it is. That's kind of what happens when, you know, you buy a kit, even though it's not really <laughs> a kit. Like the only thing on this entire kit that was specific to this car was the fact that the manifold holes are the same but other than that it's just a bunch of universal bins like nothing is supposed to be i found other reviews of people buying it they're like yeah it worked but i ended up making everything from scratch so it's just kind of what it is when you get one of these kits but 
One long angry line no doubt. Okay, so I got it jacked up so we can kind of figure out our exhaust situation over there. But for now, I'm going to work on my intake. I got my mass airflow sensor on and I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I think I'm going to go down with it. Probably something like that. Put a little, use a little bendy, put her down, and then I'll probably weld a tab on this so that I can bolt it to something solid so it doesn't, that's a lot of weight to come off of there, but I'm thinking something like that. If I remember right, I have a ton of room right here. Don't have the fender on, so I'm kind of guessing, but I'm thinking something like that should work. Oh, let's cut some shit. Also, uh, in the last video, somebody said, Casey, you say let's cut some shit a lot. You should make that into a t-shirt. Fucking bet I won't. Ask me one more goddamn time and it will be a t-shirt. I still got the, I got the t-shirt of let's throw some shit. <laughs> throw some shit at some shit, which uh, that one actually sold pretty good. But uh, you let me know, let's cut some shit. I'll make it happen. But anyways, let's cut some shit. our intake kind of figured out using some handy dandy masking tape because I don't have a coupler for this yet. It's all coming in the mail though, so it should be here soon, but I think I got this figured out. Maybe not. Oh, I think I'm back. Yeah, we're back on the main. What did I cut my hand? I don't know why that's cut, but it's bleeding good. <laughs> Ooh, I think we're good. Okay. Okay, I'm bleeding, of course. So we got our intake side figured out. Now we need this figured out. What's cool is I bought this. This was actually an accident. Um, it was a 2.5 inch to three inch. Whoops, 2.5 inch to three inch, I believe it was. And I actually needed a just a three inch for this. But bonus points. This can go on there now and then feed to our tubing right there. I just have to cut this a little bit shorter. Um, I'll probably take this off so you can see what the hell I'm talking about whenever I make it, but I should be able to put that on there, cut this here. That should have all that lined up. And then we'll come over here and figure out how we're gonna attach that into the intake. I'm saying intake and exhaust a lot because there's two intakes, there's two exhausts, but you know what? It's fine. I don't use the correct terms all the time, and uh, I still get it figured out. So let's do all that. Something like that. I might need to stretch it a little bit. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see. I have I have this size tubing. If I have to stretch it a little bit, but I think I can pull it off right there. Like that. Okay, so. Um, Fun side note, I've been working. I saw this, I don't need this anymore. I needed this, originally I was gonna cut it up for the turbo, but we got it clocked. Here's the thing, I've been looking at it, kind of having a boring day. I think I can push this together. I think I can do it with just pure strength because I'm so strong, because I'm the strongest person ever. I think I can do it, I wanna do it, but I also, I'm probably just gonna, <laughs> I'll probably just end up smashing uh, the inlets, which isn't good because I still need to use this, but I just want to try and I figured I should do this on camera because it's really stupid. Why is that leaking so bad? I don't know, it's pissing me off. Fuck that air hose. Let's see what happens. Oh, why did I think I could do this? Oh, my head. Oh, I got a piece of metal in my eye. Let's try one more time. I worked out, I worked out biceps today too, boy. I'm feeling it. Maybe it's a lot stronger than I thought it was. Oh, I'm lightheaded. Woo! All right, one more time. Woo! Then you get a drink. Diet Coke is my fuel. Oh. The problem is, I can feel it give a little bit, so it wants to bend. All right, one more. Oh. 
okay, never mind. That was stupid. What a waste of time that was. Okay, back to work. Uh, I just realized this is important to end. Still kind of works though. Got it all connected. Some more handy dandy masking tape. Gotta get another coupler. The funny thing, like these silicone couplers are like $5. I mean, they're nothing, but having the right sizes and then like a size here that went up, you just, you never have all that in stock. This kit came with a bunch of like two and a half inch, I think it was, cause that's what this is. But this is three and a half. This is two and a half. Like this is three, like certain things are three. The mass airflow sensors, three and a quarter. So you just, you know, gotta have funky. Never easy. Anybody that builds cars knows that shit. But we got all of our, basically all of our intake side done other than this connection here. There's another funky coupler I was talking about. This is all connected. We just gotta figure this out. If I had another 90, I could just, Cut it here, have a little nice 90. That's not gonna work, so we're gonna have to do some finagling. But I think, I think I can have those two connect, cut this right here at the bend, and then cut it there, and then have a coupler there. So if we get this cut, the intake side is 100% done. come with the right way skate naturally fucking universal ebay shit uh but i think i'll have to bridge a way skate in here somewhere but I, I have plenty of room to do whatever so intake side is done for now baby hell yeah and it looks good too we need to figure out the exhaust situation now we'll get underneath the car and see what we can do Okay, I got the exhaust cut and welded. I went ahead and turned it down. Now I have a V-band on it. Whenever I loosen this, this side comes off now. It's basically just like an exhaust clamp. But we're gonna go ahead and put it on here. I still wanna run my AC, so this is gonna be a problem. I just don't know how I'm gonna pull it off yet. I think I can bend this and maybe go around. I don't know. Really still like to have the AC in it. So, now we know where our exhaust is gonna go. And now my goal is to come down and then back down here. I left the stock exhaust on currently because my goal is to get back down to that because that goes out. I mean, it, it, only, it stops around the rear seat, but I don't know, I might have to change it, but I would like to keep that as my O2 sensors on it and stuff, so. That might be nice. I'm thinking the goal is to bring the driver's side over, have enough room to come down to this one. This one goes out and down. I'd like to do that maybe and then have these cross. I don't know. We're gonna get under there and see how we can connect this shit. Okay, we get to get creative because the outlet from the turbo is two and a half. The car only runs an inch and a inch and three quarters. So we get to go two and a half down to two down to inch and three quarters. I'm just going to make it three different pipes since I have so many different sizes. Here is the kit I bought, which is wrong. So we get to save that for another kit. That is two and a half inch stainless. It's really too big for this. Uh, I might end up using some of it out the back, but I'm not sure yet. This is a two inch 
random bend you can buy on Amazon for like 20, 30 bucks. I am going to use a little bit of that. I also have some great news. I don't know if we're going to be able to see under here very well, but I just cut up a bunch of little funky bends. It was time lapse, who knows, but I just bu cut up a bunch of little funky bends and I'm going to make this work. I'm getting ready to weld it. I'm going to make this work going back to the stock exhaust. And I don't know if we're going to see. It's always hard to film under a car, but we actually have room for, this is the exhaust off of the turbo manifold. I actually have room to go straight down here. Let me see if I can see it. There we go. It obviously needs a 90 on it but it will come back here away from the tie rod. If I hug this right against there, it'll come. And then there is the driver's side exhaust. So I'm gonna have this come down, run into this. So now my driver's side will be connected. I'll block that off. And then now my new turbo is gonna come into that downspout and then out. I kind of love, it's a rat rod. I kind of love it when guys run their turbo exhaust like out the hood and shit like that's super cool and I like it but I don't really think this is the project for it. This one's gonna I mean it doesn't look like it yet but this one's actually gonna be kind of a like a classy low rider tail dragger so a big old hood stack isn't really gonna be it but it would be it would have been badass in like something like the 55 Ford we just built just turbo exhaust coming out but on this one I'm just gonna hide it all get it back down, the stock exhaust. What I'm gonna do now is get all these pieces tacked in place down to there, and then I'm going to cycle my suspension to make sure my suspension hits none of that. And then I think what I can do with my AC flange, if this goes out this way, my AC should be able to come back around this way. I might end up having to make custom lines for it, but I should still be able to use that, which would be nice. Let's tack some shit. Let's see what happens when the wheel cycles. I could have just set the car down, but I'm a dumb person. Oh, it's going to fly out and hit me in the face. Don't ever do that. Why am I doing this? I would never do this normally, but I'm doing it because the camera's on. I'm going to pop that fucking tire is what I'm going to do. Oh, I just said it. I just said it. Why would, why? I don't even know why I did that. Let's, uh... I'm so mad at myself. Let's take it off the jack stands real fast. Fuck this video. Okay, good news. Uh, it's fully up. For some reason, I thought it came up a hell of a lot more than that. But maybe not. Maybe that's it. All the weight is on the lower A-arm, so it should be up. So we're good here. We're good there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off, and I can weld it fully now. I think we're going to call it right now. It has been a long day. I think this video is probably going to get zero sheet metal work done, but hopefully we can get all this turbo shit buttoned up because it ended up being a ton more hours than I thought, just like always. But we are a ton of hours in already, and I still got a bunch of shit to do. But super excited because I think this downspout is going to work, even though it's a four-wheel drive and it was meant for a two-wheel drive. I think we can kind of just snake some shit around there. It's going to be tight. It's going to have a couple tight bends, but it should be doable. So I'm calling it a day. The next day. Good Lord, looking so pretty. Oh my gosh. Starting to look like something. Uh, masking tape is NHRA approved, so I can race like this, just so you know. That's nah, pretty good fitment. <laughs> Still need to do some TIG welding on that, but pretty much got that side done. I welded it a little more solid. It's still not great, but this is all going to get exhaust wrapped. But I still want to TIG weld this flange because it'll look a lot better than a sloppy MIG weld. But we are going to do that later. For now, we're going to try and figure out our bottom exhaust. I think I got a good idea how to do it. It's just a lot of bullshit under the car, and I don't know how much of it you're going to be able to see. But we'll see what we can do. So, as I expected... Um, I can get really no camera under there very good, so I'm just going to explain what I'm doing. This is the exhaust off the new manifold. 
and I want this to attach to the driver's side. So what I have to do, unfortunately, it kicks out in the front, which is great for a two-wheel drive truck. It is bad for a four-wheel drive truck because there's all kinds of shit in here. So what I'm going to do with this, I want this to be almost a 180. It's like a 120-ish. But I want that to come down, and then I can start. I have a pretty clear path from there. I mean, I got another crazy bend, but I have a pretty clear path from there. I can get it all the way back to the passenger side. So I'm going to cut this off because this is my ball joint that... I call it a ball joint because it's actually a ball, but it's probably not called that. That's my exhaust joint, so I need that in. I'm going to cut this right here, and then I found this is one of the pieces of pipe I cut off. I'm going to try and use it for some of its funky bends and see if I can't get that down and around, and then I have some other exhaust pipe where I can attach it. So we got to cut some shit. We're going to get pretty creative on this one. <laughs> I thought the other one was creative because I had to go from two and a half to two and a quarter to two to inch and three quarters. So I had basically every one of those pipes has a step down, but uh, this under here is gonna be even more exciting. So let's get to it. So about eight hours ago, I had said, there's going to be some funky bins, but they're not going to be that funky. They were very funky. Also, pretty damn ugly. Basically, I said all that to say, it's been a bitch. But, once I install this, the exhaust is done. The exhaust side is done, intake side is done. Oh, also, somebody was very upset on the last episode that the Pussy Pink, the most powerful drill in the world, was not drilling out some holes. Well, that was just because the battery was dead. The Pussy Ping most powerful drill in the world is the best drill in the world. Obviously, it's the most powerful. And it is my main drill, but I do sometimes use other drills. I do want to apologize for that. The gentleman told me he almost unfollowed, and to be honest, I, I probably would have, but he's a better person than me. He stuck around and he asked. She's still here, I love it. Pussy Ping drill for life. Let's install this exhaust in. I don't know, do an outro. Shit. Turbo exhaust is completely done. The intake side is also completely done, which is great. Uh, and yes, I was drinking red Kool-Aid. So, I don't know, I felt like telling you, I guess. You can see it on camera. I figured I might as well say something. All right, back to the shit. Here is our exhaust side. Goes down into, that is actually the stock exhaust. And that goes all the way out to about the rear tire. I will finish that out later. I was more worried about all this. Intake side goes here. Intake side comes out here. I have fittings here and here. I'm also going to go ahead and put another V-band um, on this, I had it set up to where it had like an normal exhaust uh, clamp. I don't like that as much. I'm just going to put another V-band down there so I can just put that piece in, take that piece off if I ever need to take the turbo off. And then here is the rest of it. Carb. And I don't know if I can see anything, especially since I took the jack back down. But let me turn the light on. There it is. Exhaust out from there. I definitely probably should have left it on the jack stands, but it actually goes out. You can see the bend. That is the driver's side. So now the passenger side is connected to the driver's side. It goes down around this way, around to the driver's side. Driver's side piping is a little bit longer, obviously, than the passenger side, but everything I've read said that's not that big of a deal, especially since I'm not making like race horsepower boost, you know, or like I'm not going crazy with the boost. I mean, in reality, this didn't even need turbo in the first place. I just wanted to do it because it made it a little bit cooler, a little more fun, but I mean, I'm only trying to make 10 to 12 PSI. I'm not looking for something crazy. That's another reason why like some of these bins being a little bit sharper, um, technically you might lose, if I was going for like 30 PSI, that would cause me a couple, but that's, like I said, I'm not going for that, so this is fine. It's not that big of a deal, but sweet, it's done. Very productive week. This was a huge pain in the ass, and I still need to order a couple couplers, but 
Thank you very much for watching. I am exhausted. Also, before I wrap up here today, I wanted to ask a question. Um, my buddy, Puddings Fab Shop, whose account is blowing up. Uh, if you're not subscribed there, go ahead. I think he went, me and him, I was at 5,000 subs. He was at like 10,000. I mean, but it, we were close. We were kind of close. And he blew up. He's at like 75 now in the last three months. I mean, his account just went crazy, which is awesome. Super cool guy. But he does a mail segment um, where he basically has a P.O. box. He lets fans send him stuff. He opens it up. He goes through it. It seems like a lot of fun. Let me know if that's something you guys want to do because I'll get a P.O. box and uh, you can start sending me stuff. I, I don't know. It might be fun. I have a lot of sponsors send me stuff, so it probably wouldn't be the worst thing to have a P.O. box anyway. But let me know if that's something you guys are interested in because... Uh, I think it could be fun. I watched I watched his video on it the other day, and it was hilarious. People sent him, like, used panties and shit, which I just thought was great. So let me know what you think. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm super excited to get all the piping done, all the tubing done, all the exhaust, all the take. I know I'm going to have to add a couple things, like a wastegate and stuff. Excited that we can go ahead and start on the sheet metal in the next episode. I brought my planishing hammer here. I got my English wheel down at my other shop. So we're going to start sheet metaling in our fenders and our hood and hopefully start to get this thing looking like a car. I'd also like to finish in some of this firewall area. Just You can still tell it's a hacked up blazer <laughs> with the front clip off, and I'd like to change that in the next episode. So please stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff they tell you to do at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace. Also, check out these fucking J's, man. I mean, what? What? Sorry, it's late. <laughs>